Thank you for auditing the always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who has to comfort his dog. It's thundering here in Rochester, New York, and uh, Toby's quite afraid of the thunder. So I am both going to be doing a music review of the new Year Old Droog album, Yadney Dangerfield, and also being a professional thunder buddy. So this is the second album by Your Old Droog that I've reviewed. I reviewed uh, Yodney Stewart, and that was a very good experience for me. I mean, a lot of people who like my takes on underground hip-hop have been telling me that I really need to get into Yod, to Yod into Your Old Droog. And it's funny because a similar thing happened, you know, like Action Bronson, I heard him when the first time I listened to his music, all I could hear was Ghostface Killer, and then now I've listened to a couple more projects, and I just hear Action Bronson. Same thing happened where I just don't even hear Nas anymore. Like, I listen to your old Drew, and I just don't even hear it. What I do hear is a lot of comedy, and a lot of references to comedy. And one of the main goals of anyone in the humanities, I think, is to do sort of two things. <laughs> take things that are very seriously in a laughing light, and take things that are very funny in a serious light. It's actually a really important thing that we do in the humanities. It really helps us to understand the human experience much better. And I think this album, this short 16-minute video, I mean album, I don't know how long the video is going to be. I don't edit these things. You can tell me. It's probably going to be longer than the album itself. One of the most important things that happens here is in, on the surface, it's just a goofy title with a goofy name. Yodney Dangerfield, named after the stand-up comedian Rodney Dangerfield. But this is the thing. You are incorrect if you just look at Rodney Dangerfield and see him as a punchline-driven, goofy, talented, but ultimately superficial comic. You know, if you put him, you know, rungs beneath George Carlin or Lenny Bruce. He's actually a very important and very deep comedian. Now, if you don't know him at all, which is very possible. <laughs> uh, I was talking to my friend Stella today. She's good deal younger than me, she didn't know anything about Roddy Dangerfield. So I'll just make it very clear. His main shtick is this. He tells a lot of jokes, and he is the butt of the joke for the most part. Sometimes he'll be making fun of his wife or making fun of his dog. <laughs> but for the most part, the joke is that he is just a loser who gets no respect, who is... And I'm going to be telling a lot of Rodney Dangerfield jokes throughout this video, so you'll get an idea of what it is. But if we go beyond that, we also have to understand that Rodney Dangerfield is something of a hero, certainly in the context of Your Old Droog. So Your Old Droog is a very talented New York rapper who also happens to be white and who happens to be of Ukrainian descent and Jewish. Rodney Dangerfield very much lived the American Jewish experience of a, com of a comic in New York. And to a certain extent, the amount that he feels downtrodden is a sort of representation of the way that he and his family members and other members of his cultural grouping were put down in American society, and just, it gives him this sort of every man, every man quality. And what's great is that Rodney Dangerfield managed to be a household name, very famous, sorry Toby, <laughs> he took me in the face. Uh, he managed to be a, a household name while constantly putting himself down. And he ended up becoming a hero by putting himself down. I think that's what your old Droog is doing, by making himself the Yodney Dangerfield. Because this album is quite self-deprecating. Making an album kind of based on comedy is not of itself kind of a weird idea. But I think it's on purpose. I think he's really drawing a parallel. Now I should mention, this is not the first time that Rodney Dangerfield and hip hop have mixed. I bought this at the Record Archive in Rochester, New York, my favorite record store, Rappin' Rodney. <laughs> it's not very good. It's okay. It's an artifact of its time. But that, this is the first Rodney Dangerfield-related hip-hop album. If you don't have it, uh, don't get it. You can listen to it on YouTube. Um, it's only really for real-deal Rodney Dangerfield fans. Someday I hope to meet your old Droog, and I'm going to have him sign this. That, that's my little dream. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go through the album, and I'm going to treat it as a comedy album, not as a hip-hop album. Now, it is a hip-hop album. The beats here are great. I'll go over them briefly. There isn't a single bad beat on here. They're all great showcases. But really, what I think he's doing that's interesting is he's doing what a stand-up comic is, which is he's delivering punchlines, and I'll give you some of his best punchlines, but punchlines which tell about himself and which tell about the world. Okay? So... Let's get started. Before each song, I'm going to tell you 
two Rodney Dangerfield jokes. My uncle's dying wish was to have me sitting on his lap. He was in the electrical chair. Electric chair, not electrical chair. A girl phoned, a girl phoned me and said, come on over, there's nobody home. I went over, nobody was home. All right, let me give you an example of what's happening here. This sort of importance of this Yodney Dangerfield with the stamp, you can click above the banana there for the song Triple Lindy. Now, musically, it's this great, weird, descending beat, kind of whistling strange sounds. He does a cool thing where he restarts a verse. But if you are a fan of Rodney Dangerfield and you hear the name Triple Lindy, you know exactly what this is referenced to. The 1985 movie, I believe it's 1985, Back to School. Rodney Dangerfield's best movie. The first time Danny Elfman ever did a musical score. I believe it was before uh, the Pee Wee Herman movie. And what's great here is that the Triple Lindy is the moment where this rich loser, who is Thornton Mellon, the character played by Rodney Dangerfield, he goes back to college. And this is sort of the moment where he's on the diving team and he does this insane dive, this Triple Lindy dive, which has never been done before, totally impossible. So this is his moment of great success. We'll get back to that in a second. He opens up this track saying he'll make a rapper get in touch with his roots like Black Thought. There's a couple roots references. That was the last review I did, so that's kind of weird. And then he has this whole thing, which I think is like this to me sounds like a stand up comedian routine. Rappers bore us with war stories about jumping off the porch. I ain't even have no porch to jump off. So poor, we just walked out the front door. So it's the trope in rap music of jumping off the porch and entering into a life of luxury, a life of crime, a life of hip-hop, etc. <laughs> but, hey, I was so poor, I didn't even have a porch. He's, he's delivering Rodney Dangerfield lines. Still trying to break the curse, used to share a bed with my grandmother, steal dollars out of her purse. All right? Like, he's really painting this interesting image of this downtrodden guy. I'm not kidding. I used to, spend, I used to share a bed with my grandmother. Now what they pay me per verse is per verse. A very good punchline, playing with words, which stand-up comedians do. My childhood was Dangerfield, now it's Triple Lindy. So this is the final track of the album, but I think it's the best example of how the album functions because he's making it clear that he is this heroic Rodney Dangerfield character. A lot of more, more punchlines than your so-called funny man. I'm not trying to be cavalier like Braun in 2010. <laughs> He even makes reference to Lenny Bruce, get me on stage, I feel like Lenny Bruce. And this is interesting because, um, you know, there's not a lot of, of prominent uh, Jewish figures holding microphones in the hip hop scene, right? I mean, obviously, there's not none, there's the Beastie Boys, there's people like, like Yod. Um, but it's fun because there is a long tradition in America of absolute excellence of Jewish American stand-up comedians, going back to Rodney Dangerfield and going back to Lenny Bruce. So it sort of makes sense, you know, like he's not trying to create some kind of connection to you know, Marvin Gaye or <laughs> Miles Davis, right? He's actually connecting to something that is actually from his culture. And if you've never studied the life and the work of Lenny Bruce, you really owe it to yourself. Content warning? He was way ahead of his time, so some of his stuff sounds like it's regressive and racist, but actually, he was so not racist that he sounds racist now because he had to sound racist. Anyways, it's complicated, but he's an amazing artist, and it's, it's very, very clear here that he's thinking in the mode of stand-up comedy, and this album is basically like a crash course on stand-up comedy. Finish, figured out what my purpose is, stepped to the mic with no nervousness, hair apparent like child services. So here we have this idea that he has found his purpose. And really what is the difference between a good stand-up comic and a rapper? Not much. They're alone with a microphone, they're telling stories, they're trying to hit punchlines, and they're trying to get fame and money. Do you see the, the, the correlation here? Do you see how he is, Yodney Dangerfield? How you doing, Toby? Look at those ears. Do you see how worried he is? He hears a little bit of thunder and he gets super scared. <clears throat> I get no respect. The day I was born, the doctor picked me up and smacked me. I found out the nurse, she gave me a few N2. She got a few N2. I can't deliver like Rodney Dangerfield. 
My doctor gave me sleeping pills. He told me to take them when I wake up. Very funny. I'm not going to go through the rest of the album a little bit quicker with the opening track, The Unknown Comic. <clears throat> cool kind of odd sample here. Kind of a haunting, jazzy ride symbol all over. The beat kind of falls apart, comes back together. Mentions Quest Love and the opening line again. Very connected to the roots here. He says he makes hip-hop, but his heart beats klezmer. Again, this connection to his Jewish-American heritage. Uh, he makes a reference to, <laughs> to J-Lo and Geely. <laughs> The, the terrible uh, J-Lo movie. Uh, can't see me when I drop gems like Wells, Wilson from Home Improvement. He does this thing, and he did this on the last album too, I guess this is one of his hallmarks, where he'll just tag something with, who? What? Toby? You know, he'll, he'll do those kinds of things. And, uh, and it's just to sort of emphasize the bizarreness of his lines. And obviously, Wilson from Home Improvement was the guy who you couldn't see who was behind the fence. <laughs> Toby saying, uh? um, and then just like these great punchlines. Many rappers buy weapons just for the design. Uh, the, the guns are fashion accessories. You can say they are dressed to the nines. Okay, Toby, you want to go sit on the couch for now? You can, okay, go ahead. Go on. Okay. I still have him on a leash. If he's not on a leash, he just loses his mind and goes from window to window, barking and barking. Have a seat. Sit. Um, talks about being a class clown like Carlin on vinyl. One of the... Okay, don't be. All right. You want to come on my lap or not? You have to choose one place or the other, but you can't just sit there whining. Come on, Toby. Back up. Come on. Ah. <laughs> All right. He's so nervous. He was um, abused before he was saved by my wife. So he's a very nervous dog, but he's, he's, he's recovering, you know? They got these little brains that they can't, they can't go to therapy and get de-traumatized. So that's why I had them. If that doesn't make you smash the like bucket, please smash the like bucket and subscribe and go to Toby VPN to get 10% off your very personal nodes. Um, so, you know, he's, he's making reference to George Carlin. He's making reference to Lenny Bruce. He's making reference to all these great stand-up comedians. Uh, and then he ends the, he ends the, the whole song with props aren't always good word to Alec Baldwin. <laughs> that's, that's one of those jokes. It's a little too soon. You know, Alec Baldwin killed somebody with a gun that was supposed to be a fake prop. <clears throat> Time for another Rodney Dangerfield joke, Toby. During sex, my wife always wants to talk to me. Just the other night, she called me from a hotel. Oh, when I was a kid in show business, I was poor. I used to go to orgies just to eat grapes. <laughs> That joke is like, I've never obviously been to an orgy. Not obviously, I've never been to an orgy. But the idea that you go to an orgy to eat grapes. Next song is called The Hand of Yod. Cool kind of swirling piano, some good guitar notes here. Um, I get more hits on the mic than Dave Chappelle's leg. So again, another reference to a great stand-up comedian. Then he like does this great rhyming trick where he says, who, like, who am I dating? He says Tiffany Haddish. I took the chick to Tiffany's. When she grew up, she never had ish. So it's like rhyming the faux swear. And then he gets sort of, okay, boomer. My generation was raised on slap boxing. Yours did unboxing reactions. We was about the action. You know, it's kind of like thing about the difference of generations. Quite funny. Uh, the top five, I'm in it, like British slang. Just these kinds of punchlines. And you know, that's a lot of rap, a lot of rap writing is about having good punchlines. Um, but really just, I'm in it like, like British slang. Um, and then he has these other lines, you know, so he's like pretty constantly talking about how poor he was when he was growing up, kind of how pathetic he was in that kind of danger field mode. Um, so poor, I thought luxury was Vianetta. So Vianetta was like this, these like wafery cookie ice cream deals. I don't know. I remember them when I was growing up too. Like they seemed like luxury, but they were just these cheap things you could buy at the supermarket. He then mentions the first of two sort of infamous stand-up comics, Pauly Shore. Pauly Shore who was the son of the person who ran the comedy store. A big hero when I was growing up. Um, and then there's a line I don't understand. Could you please tell me if you are a Yod fan, what does the line, getting no pub like they sampled sting? What does that mean? I don't get it. Who sampled Sting? Didn't like Juice World sample Sting? Is this about Juice World? Is, what does that mean? 
Then it ends with a quote from George Carlin, kind of getting back in more there. Then we get to the song 50K or Brunch. Beautiful beat here, strong beat with guitar and voice. Great, every once in a while the drum fill will come in on this beat. Mm. I, my favorite kind of these underground beats is when they're fairly simple beats, but that have just the right kind of details in there. I think this whole song is dissing Jay-Z. <laughs> I can't quite figure it out. It seems like it could be. So it starts off with this, this idea of people being offered 50, would you rather have $50,000 or eat brunch with Jay-Z? And the idea is if you had brunch with Jay-Z, you'd learn so much wisdom that it'd be worth more than $50,000. I mean, I'd rather have the $50,000, but I'd really like to talk to Jay-Z, <laughs> but not, not because he would like teach me how to be a mogul, you know? But then, like, I think the rest of the song, you know, F your origin story, bunch of cliches strung together corny. Like, I heard your wife's box smells like a veggie patty. <laughs> Very specific. I heard you aren't nice to your fans. I don't know, maybe this is a general diss on older rappers, but it feels very much like it's a specific diss at Jay-Z. But maybe you can tell me in the comments after you smash the like bucket and subscribe to Toby VPN. Um, and then he has this whole crazy verse about reminding me when old players go to China to ball. <laughs> He's just so savage talking about, <laughs> about like people who you know, go to China to play basketball and then even if they're washed up in America, they can become very successful in China. <laughs> it's like, you dropped 50. <laughs> Toby, this is a very serious video. You dropped 50 on the Shanghai Sharks. All right, Toby, you are officially free. Go. covered in Toby hair. And then he makes reference to SUNY Purchase. So I uh, do not represent any particular college, um, but I definitely am aware of SUNY Purchase, State University of New York Purchase. I am thankful that he's referencing a public college in New York State. Uh, <laughs> and he rhymes SUNY Purchase with see how soon he purchase. Very funny, start rocking the hood like Cornholio, Beavis and Butthead reference. Just again, just constantly with these, with these uh, punchlines that have sort of a deeper meaning. Next song is called Man on the Moon, very clearly a reference to the movie about Andy Kaufman, another great American stand-up comedian. Kind of stressful beat here, <laughs> a bunch of hacks like the 80s Pistons. This is a funny joke, you know, a hack is a bad comedian. So here, it's almost like everyone is a bad comedian if they are a bad rapper. So a bunch of hacks like the, like the 80s Pistons. An interesting, funny idea. Makes reference to another comedian, Joey Diaz, who I don't know that well. Um, Y'all got props on stage like Carrot Top, another comedian who is a little bit ignominious, known for using props, much like I use Toby as a prop mentions Andy Kaufman and his character Latka. Uh, and then it ends with the first time we actually hear uh, Rodney Dangerfield himself on a song, okay? So Rodney Dangerfield is saying here, he told me my name was the problem. What I imagine this is saying is if you have a noticeably Jewish name, you're often encouraged in, in, uh, in show business to change your name, right? Someday look up you know, Natalie Portman's real name as an example. Um, it's a terrible anti-Semitic reality of our life that this is a thing that is pushed on many, many Jewish entertainers. So what's fascinating here is that this is the first time we hear the quote from Rodney Dangerfield, but it's actually him in a defiant mode. He said, <laughs> he said even William Shakespeare said, what's in a name? He responded, who? So it's like, it's about his difficulty in in show business as being somebody who has a name which is noticeably Jewish, who's then saying that Shakespeare says what's in a name and the person he's talking to is so stupid and ignorant that he doesn't even know who it is. Interesting. The next song is called The Simpsons. You can see I have a Serbian Simpsons comic back there. Um, so I'm going to quote two lines from Rodney uh, Dangerfield when he was on The Simpsons as the character Larry Burns. My dad and I started off great, and now we're falling apart like a Chinese motorcycle. <laughs> still to this day, still to this day, whenever something is falling apart, I say it's falling apart like a Chinese motorcycle. Turns out, I don't say that anymore. It's probably, it is, it's not good to say. And also apparently, Chinese motorcycles are quite good. I have found out since. But 
I am of Scottish origin, and the other line I like to quote is, this place is emptier than a Scottish pay toilet. The joke being that Scottish people are cheap. I don't know. This all leads into the song just called The Simpsons. And this is a funny title here because really in this comic zone that we're in, where everything's comedic and laughing, The Simpsons, not only do they have Ronnie Dangerfield, but it is for people my generation, and I assume I assume he's basically my generation, maybe a couple, you know, probably like five, ten years younger, um, the Simpsons filled a role that a lot of stand-up comedians filled for older people. Like, that was how we learned what comedy was. Great funky beat with a triangle. And then he starts off with saying, Mother effers know my body. Like Jerry West. So this is a sports reference to the fact that Jerry West, the greatest athlete ever to come from Morgantown, West Virginia. And if you are ever in Morgantown, West Virginia, you can drive on Jerry West Road and Don Knotts Road, but Jerry West as well. Jerry West, the great West Virginian hero, is also the silhouette of the NBA logo. Like, he is literally the logo of the NBA. So that's what he's saying. You know my body like Jerry West. And he even says pause. All these kinds of punchlines with the ad-libs to indicate that you need to pause. I got a lot of props today. Like Carrot Top. Uh, if you have 20 co-writers on a song, it's joint custody. Kind of funny. <laughs> Your voice sounded better than a speaker at the drive through I think that's actually supposed to make you think about the drive through voice in The Simpsons. Welcome to Krusty Burger. May I take your order? And then he has this line. <laughs> I got M's and G's on my ear like Homer Simpson. Now, I assume M's and G's on his ear mean that he has, like, uh, um, you know, earrings that are worth thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, M's and G's. But also, I want to show you something. I'm going to draw Homer Simpson for you. you know, first, you got one of those. And you got to do the eyeball there, eyeball there, and then you get the nose out. Okay, then you got to do one of these here, and then you got to do one of those. All right, so it looks like we've got Homer Simpson, right? This is not Nightmare Fuel. This is a good drawing of Homer Simpson. Now, the problem with Homer Simpson is you got to get the hair. And you think now it's Homer Simpson, right? Now it's a perfect drawing of Homer Simpson? Well, you got to get his ears. How do you draw Homer Simpson's ears? Well, you do it by drawing the initials of the person who created Homer Simpson. Matt. Greening. M G. M G on my ears like Homer Simpson. Is that not a great drawing of Homer Simpson? Does this not earn your like bucket smash? So these kinds of jokes, this kind of punchline, and then and then Heems comes on for the only guest verse on the album, and I've never heard this before. He is doing some kind of intentionally bad rhyming. Like, he just rhymes everything with The Simpsons. It's like, makes money like The Simpsons. On SNL, like Ashley Simpson. Gets away with murder like O.J. Simpson. Bottle full of lean like Maggie Simpson. New York cheese bus like Otto Simpson. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. And then he just ends with saying The Simpsons. And then someone does a fake Nelson Haha -ha voice at the end. It's fascinating. I love it. I love this idea of an intentionally bad set of rhymes. You know, like there's alternative rap and then there's this. You know, this is really pushing forward the boundaries. You know, this is sort of like an intentionally bad comic. Brussels sprouts. The next song is called The Tonight Show. And The Tonight Show is where Rodney Dangerfield really got a lot of his fame. The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, who hosted it for many decades, was a nightly TV show and they would have stand-up comics who would come on. And he was one of the most popular guests. Oh, I tell you, last week was a rough week. I saw my therapist, and he said I was crazy. I said I'd like a second opinion. He said, okay, you're ugly, too. That was from his appearance in 1978. From an appearance several years later, 1983, my dad was a workaholic. You mentioned work, he'd get drunk. Do you, do you, get, the, do you get the joy of Rodney Dangerfield? Yeah, he's just kind of a jerk. But there's that sadness that he never lets you get away from. 
like that sense of loss and 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 abandonment that's at the heart of all he's abandoned by everybody in his life so constantly and yet he's always joking about it do you see how he's kind of a hero i don't know if you hear chevy chase talk about him though he's not a hero at all but i'm not going to get into that beef i don't believe chevy chase on anything but don't even look that up so the tonight show is a great compressed funk beat nice kind of funk bass uh <laughs> More punchlines. Chicks don't already want them unless... She, like, So he says the whole thing about how women only want to be with you if you've been with other women. And he ha delivers the punchline. They treat you like an outcast unless you get some stank on you. <laughs> so Stankonia is an outcast album. This is sort of incel talk, by the way. This is sort of like, I, I don't know about this, you know, but... And then throughout the song, he mentions different hosts of The Tonight Show. Starts off with Tonight Show like Jack Parr. Later on, he says, my M.O. is to have more cars than Jay Leno. Jay Leno is famous for having a big chin, a high voice, and many, 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 many cars. Uh, and then at the very end of the song, he has Johnny Carson introducing Rodney Dangerfield. He's a strange man. That's how it starts off. Um, more just like weird punchlines. I eat them little punches you throw pizza combos. <laughs> like combos of this weird food that's like, they're called combos, and a combo is a kind of punch, and so you eat the punches, you throw pizza combos, all these weird lines. <laughs> you went to the gym and got buff, those dudes want you big, but but they not puff. Just really funny punch lines. I got I don't want to share a stage with a plant like Jimmy Page. So you know Jimmy Page is the guitarist for Led Zeppelin, Robert Plant is the singer for Led Zeppelin. The Led Zeppelin hip hop crossover, there is a fair amount because the beat to When the Levy Breaks was so influential in hip hop. Um, but still, it's it's a funny punchline. The bar sign said topless and bottomless. I went inside and nobody was there. <laughs> My old man, he didn't help at all. We used to play tag, and he'd drive. The album ends with the song Triple Lindy, where he talks about going from Roddy Dangerfield in his childhood to Triple Lindy, and you can just imagine him spinning through the sky as Roddy Dangerfield, as Thornton Mellon, achieving his final goal. So I don't know what's next for your old Droog. Yod Serling. Gene Yoddenberry, Yodimus Prime. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I'm excited to see where it goes. I don't think it's going to be possible for me to like him more than I like him here just because I love this comedic aspect. I love its connection to his roots. I love how serious he's taking these funny things and how amusing he's taking these serious things. I don't know. And really, I just love... I just love Rodney Dangerfield. If this doesn't get you to do anything else, you can just watch that. There's a 15 minute video called The 100 Best Jokes of Rodney Dangerfield. That's how long it takes him to tell 100 jokes. Maybe it's too old fashioned for you, but I don't think it should be. All right. Well, then, until next time, it is currently sunny. My boy's happy and relaxed over there, aren't you, Toby? He's not that relaxed. Dude's never relaxed. Because he's like Roddy Dangerfield, you know? You got to do a triple Lindy, Toby. <laughs> I'm picturing Toby on a, on a diving board. Okay, there's the camera. Hey, I edited one of my videos. I never do this, but uh, I just realized a couple things. So I, I recorded this episode on Wednesday because eventually I'm going to have to go into the hospital and, you know, help bring a child onto this earth. So, uh, so I wasn't even thinking about the fact that I was holding Toby on Thunderground Thursday while being his Thunder Buddy. So there was all these puns and jokes I could have made about it being Thunderground Buddy, Thunderground Thursday. I didn't make any of those jokes. But now that I say it out loud, maybe it's better. I should have left it that way. The other thing is, I talked a lot about Rodney Dangerfield not changing his name. Um, that, that's not actually accurate. <laughs> so he was born, uh, did they Jack? Rodney Cohen and his father's name was Philip Cohen and he his father was a vaudeville performer who changed his name to Phil Roy so apparently Rodney Dangerfield also went by Jack Roy so he did definitely change his name to appear to be less Jewish 
um, the, the name Dangerfield apparently was stolen from uh, uh, Jack Benny, who had a character named Rodney Dangerfield. I don't know. There's a whole old, old, old story about that. But I just thought I'd, I'd share that. That everything I was saying was true about the, the terrible impulse to push Jewish performers to deny their identity. Um, but it wasn't like his actual last name was Dangerfield, as I made it seem earlier in the video. So there we go. I did a, I did an edit. You all happy now? Yeah, I'm wearing my, my, uh, my Jar Jar shirt. Just went to the gym. It was good. All right. Th thund thunderground, buddy. Thunder, 